Namaste. So today we will be discussing about this pose. Downward facing dog. Uh, there are lots of myths and confusions for this beginner posture. So I want to keep this as beginner centric. I would also be discussing about what are the ways I usually teach the students and on what cases I modify those attempts. We are repeating this downward dog for plenty number of times. Like if you're doing a vinyasa class, you would be probably doing a down dog for more than 10 times at least, if not more. And uh, keeping this concept in mind that it's a repetitive posture, it's important to do it in a right way. That way might vary from person to person. And a lots of different lineages and teachers teaches in different methods. I personally feel this method of how I approach with a student works. Also for my own personal practice, I prefer to do it in this form. It is not that I do not vary the form. At times I would also vary it, which I'll be describing as we are going into the posture. So let's dive in straight. Position of the hands, shoulder width distance apart, fingers spread it wide. And place the palm so that your index finger faces forward. You can turn in so that the index and middle finger faces towards a symmetric line. That's also fine. Uh, it won't be changing too much of your wrist sensitivity, unlike you are doing a handstands and so, where the wrist have to take a lot of load. Here, the wrist loading is not a lot, but turning the palm slightly out also gives me the space to release the contraction over my trapeze muscle group, which is, I believe, is the most important thing while we attempt a downward dog. So that's the position I would be in. My arms are straight. And then as I walk out, there is no such proper distance about how close I should be or how far I should be. To me, as I'm doing the posture, I feel that there is a balanced weight sharing in between the palms and the feet. So if I am keeping my legs too far wide, I feel I'm not in control of the posture well. If I'm keeping it somewhere around the middle line, this is where I feel that it's a lot less effort added on to be in the posture. And I feel that the loading on the palms and the feet are right. If I'm walking too much in, again, I feel like my shoulders are kind of stuck. I'm not getting enough flexion. So if you can see my back rounds, but as I'm walking back, my back gets straighter, my shoulder opens up. So it is your personal feeling about how far the hands and the feet should be. Again, an even weight distribution works. So next part is the legs. Keep your feet as wide as your hips are. Feet as wide as your hips. Lots of time when we are doing vinyasa sequences, the teacher would ask you bring the feet together. And that is for a purpose. So unless until that is being said, it's always feet hip width distance apart. For super tight students, I like to teach them with the bent knees to begin with. Do not worry about your heels going down at the beginning. So bend the knees and try reaching this shoulder line in line with the ribs. So instead of holding it here, where you're loading those deltoids a lot, try sinking down and reach into that neutral line. So now you can see from my wrist into my upper arm, then into my ribs, it's one straight line. And that would only be achieved if your knees are bent when you are stiff around the hamstring. But this is what happens. You try to straighten the knees and that pushes your shoulder forward. Not really recommended because it tires out your muscle very quickly. So bend the knees, try keeping the hips high and reach downward. Over time, slowly, as you're warming up, as your practice gets better weeks after weeks, months after months, the heel will start to go down. For many students, I see that their heel takes a couple of years to go all the way down. And that's perfectly fine. Yoga is a journey. It's not a destination. Some days you will feel like when the body is more ready, the heel naturally goes down. Some days it doesn't. So keep that as an effort to gradually keep progressing into it. Next part, shoulder position. This I believe is the most important thing in a downward dog. Um, because we are repeating this posture so many times, 
it starts to tighten up the trapezius muscle. So these collar muscles are called the trapeze. And that happens when we are keeping the shoulders very elevated. You can see this contracts. If the shoulders are elevated, the shoulder blades are elevated high. There is a slight internal rotation of the upper arm. This is when you tend to tire out those trapeze a lot. So I always remind myself to draw the shoulders down, draw the shoulders down and create a slight external rotation with my upper arm. So now you can see this muscle group releases. It was contracted before, now it releases out. So when I'm into the pose, this is how it looks. When I contract it or I over contract it, it looks like I'm looping in my shoulders. So there is an inner rotation that way which is not a preferred way I do because now I start to feel my trapeze already. But I would rather draw the shoulders slightly away from the ears line and go for a little external rotation. Now, as I'm wrapping my arms downwards, if you can see this action from one, two, two, two is good. One not preferred, that's one, that's two. So I'm just rooming out my upper arm downwards to create space across my trapeze. And that's when it becomes lighter, even if the posture is repetitive and it's coming back to into the class for many number of times, it feels absolutely fine. So remember shoulders down and slight external rotation to create space across the trapeze. Now, uh, a method which I also do personally at times is trying to stretch myself down, like I want to reach my head all the way down. I do not do it often. When I want to do it is because when I want to create a length through this line, I feel my side body is, needs that room, the stretch feels good. I would do it once in a while, maybe once or twice when I'm doing my practice, just to create that nice room and stretch, trying to dip down my head. And this is not incorrect. Uh, there is a myth about this uh, form that, all right, I'm hyperextending my shoulder too much and it creates impingement on the joint. Nothing of that sort happens unless you already have some issues with your shoulder. And that's when this form is not recommended. But if you are fine with your shoulder joint, that's absolutely fine. Why? Because even when you're doing a wheel or even you're standing against a wall and doing stretches to release this area, you're doing exactly the same action and maybe the range of motion when you're doing a wheel and pushing out to open the chest is a lot more greater than what you're receiving here in a down dog, if that makes sense. So trying to reach the head down and getting that extra bit of stretch around the upper arms, the serratus, the sideline is absolutely fine, but avoid doing this form consistently because again you are creating a lot of engagement around the trapeze which tires out the trapeze in the neck so one last time palm shoulder width distance index finger forward feet hip width distance walk out till the distance feels right relax the neck in between the upper arms send your sitting bones up send your sitting bones up and then Allow the heels to stay off or down depending on flexibility. This is really not a must. You can keep the knees bent all along the whole practice, like I'm in right now. But remind yourself from position one, you want to go to position two. So wrap your triceps down, create room with an external rotation, and do not elevate the shoulder. Depress the shoulder, creating room in between the ears and the shoulders. This is where I would keep this as my down dog. And over time, I press my heels down. I get a good, nice form there. If you want to add more stretch, watch my pelvis here. Go on for an anterior pelvic tilt. So I'm doing an anterior pelvic tilt. If you see my tailbone going up, and then I go in a posterior pelvic tilt. So if you are looking for more stretch going to anterior pelvic tilt here if you are looking for less stretch i would just keep it neutral i won't go posterior posterior was just to show you so that's posterior you would not go there in a down dog 
you would keep neutral or an anterior tilt creating more height through the sit bone and then now I start to feel as I'm bringing my heels down it's already pretty strong stretch through my calf line. One quick tip on how you can improve the flexibility around the calf muscle groups and the Achilles tendon apart from doing forward bends of course which helps to release the hamstring I like to do this with a block so you can try this as a warm-up before you're doing a downward dog if you are doing a downward dog for the sake of learning the posture itself and not for the setup of the class so I keep a block and I step the ball of my foot over the block I keep this knee very straight and then I try reaching down that's a very good release so that is what I would do if I am teaching some students how to do a downward dog in a correct form block hand positioning leg positioning trying to check with the tilt of the pelvis trying to check how much bend of the knees is required and most importantly creating that space through the trapeze with an external rotation and depression of the shoulder external rotation and depression of the shoulder arms remain straight so hope this tutorial was clear and how to get into a down dog if you have got any questions please feel free to write down on the comment section and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. Namaste.